Good evening and welcome to the Speaker MC Show, where it's all about relationships. How are you doing today? Today our show is going to be, <coughs> excuse me, spectacular. Our program is entitled Woman to Woman, and we're talking about woman empowerment, women leadership, self-esteem, how women empower other women. And this just brought a lot of, it, it warmed the cockles of my heart, I should say. Girls compete with each other, women empower one another. I saw that and I was like, yes, more women need to understand this little phrase here. Girls compete. You know how we women tend to be a little catty and all that. Yeah, well, that's a girlish attitude. So let's not adapt that kind of girlish attitude, right? Women empower each other. And that's what we're going to do here tonight. Yeah, well, we're here on the Speaker MC show, and I am so happy that you were able to join us tonight. And you may be asking, well, what is the Speaker MC show? Well, it's uh, 60 minutes of fun, education, edutainment, information. <laughs> and what we explore, it's all about relationships. We explore topics that deal with how we relate to ourselves, how we relate to our environment, and how we relate to others. Our intention for this show it's threefold. I'm all about the trifecta win. For the audience, which is you, we promise to empower and enlighten you about creating harmonious environments and boosting your self-confidence. Yes. To our guests, who you'll meet a little bit later, we provide a platform and an opportunity to share their message. And to everyone, fun. I'm all about the fun. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm all about the fun. So that's our three intentions here for tonight. That's the reason why you came to the Speaker MC show, because we promise that this will be fulfilled. So as I said, our topic tonight is woman to woman. And what we're going to discuss is what exactly is the definition of empower? That word is used so loosely amongst so many people. Do we really know what it means to empower? And how is it that we may be disempowering each other and not seeming to realize? So it may be unintentional, but the bottom line, the effect is disempowerment. And we're gonna share with you how we can do better and why it's necessary for us to do better. So before I go any further, I would love for you to meet our guests. And on the Speaker MC show, we usually have two guests and me, the host, and we talk about this particular topic, which tonight is woman to woman. However, one of our guests, she had a family emergency, so she will not be joining us tonight, but the show must go on. So I want you to meet our guest tonight. <laughs> Our guest tonight is Miss Juanita George. Juanita, just wave hello to everyone for me. Say hi. <laughs> Juanita is a pastor, prophet, and an entrepreneur, and she reigns out of the Jamaica, New York area. Yes, Juanita is honest, she's compassionate. And she's bold about loving people with the heart of Jesus Christ. She's not afraid to take a risk, for it's never risky. God leads her path every second of the day. Put your hands together and welcome Miss Juanita George. Hey, Juanita. Hi, how are you? <laughs> We are fabulous, and we are so happy to have you here tonight. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence on the Speaker MC Show. Thank you. Thank you for having me tonight. I'm excited about the topic and being with you as always. Oh, and, thank um, you. Oh, it, it's just good to be able to have these encounters where we're able to empower each other, uh, to share with each other 
but also to besides sharing with each other, reminding um, each person that of the power that's already within them themselves. Mm. Mm. Oh, you see, mm -hmm. you're in for some deep stuff, ladies and gentlemen. So just hold on one second. I'm glad you might be wondering, well, who is this woman? Well, I'm your host for this evening, and my name is Speaker MC. Yes, that's my AKA, Speaker MC. I'm a speaker and a sexual wellness consultant. I created this project called S-W-E-L-L -L for Women, and I hail out of the Brooklyn, New York area. Brooklyn in the house, yes. Well, S-W-E-L-L -L stands for Sexual Wellness and Empowered Living Lifestyles for Women. My area of expertise is to help lonely women or women who are lonely in their relationships to get back that confidence, that intimacy. And what I've done, I'm offering an eight week online experience. That's right. So as I said, I'm a sexual wellness consultant and my message shares information to women who are lonely in their relationships. And it's all about having better sex, better intimacy, and then they give themselves permission to be sensual and sexual so they can lead empowered lives. And the reason I did this was because I noticed people swapping DNA and they're not asking the right questions. And my mission here on this planet is to cut the world's divorce rate by 50%. Yes, by 50%. And I'm going to do it with your help. That's right. I produce and host two online shows. One of them is this, the Speaker MC Show, and the other is the Swell Happy Hour. And tune in, and I'll give you more details about that later. But for right now, oh, and any questions you may have, stay tuned to the end, and we're offering gifts. So you better stay tuned towards the end of the program so that you can get all your gifts and all your questions answered, okay? All right, so I'm going to stop sharing the screen right now, and we are going to take Miss Juanita off mute. Yes. Okay. All right. So All right. here we are. How do I make this bigger? Yes. All about us. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. All right, so the first thing I wanted to introduce to our audience is the definition of the word empower. Like I said, right. we use that word so loosely and so frequently. Do we really know what the word means to empower? Well, according to Webster, it means to give authorization or to make something or someone stronger or more confident. So that being said, as women, as women, and we're only exploring the woman-to-woman -woman dynamic. As women, do we normally empower each other? Do we normally make each other feel confident in, in our being? Juanita, what do you say about that? Uh, no, we don't make each other confident in our being woman-to-woman. -woman. Usually, women are in a competition there uh, with each other in some sort of way. Mm -hmm. uh, and it comes about, like, I know you were saying about the definition of uh, empowerment. And I had looked that up too, because, you know, when we were talking about the topic itself, I said, okay, what does empowerment mean? It was like authority or power given to someone or to do something. Uh, I saw it was the process of becoming stronger and more confident, uh, specifically in controlling one's life or claiming one's rights. So I found empowerment to be a two-way thing. Empowerment was something that was given, and it was also something that was within a person that was developed as well. So it was right there already, and then it was also something that can be given. So as far as women empowering each other in today's society, especially with all of the, the cameras, the, uh, the lights and in, in, in the, uh, the quote, the social media aspect, mm -hmm. 
the thing that has been happening is people are always comparing people. Oh, show us this, show us, uh, you know, uh, show us this picture or that picture. So people are, um, they are putting up pictures, let's say that are doctored of themselves because they want to look like someone who people are giving more likes to because they want to be liked. They're not looking at themselves and seeing the beauty that's within themselves because looking at the definition, it's about a process of becoming stronger and more confident. Mm -hmm. And instead of looking at the self-confidence that we're given from birth, from God, people are looking in, in trying to get confidence for themselves or some more self-esteem from other people saying they like them. So, now, one, so, so, mm -hmm. okay. So basically what you're saying is that instead of people looking inward, they're looking mm -hmm. for outward appreciation. Right. But it's really not giving true empowerment. Uh, it is a false empowerment because as I said, in, with looking at the definition of empowerment, there is empowerment that is given. Uh, it, it, it's an empowerment given to someone uh, to do something. Let's say maybe, let's say maybe even let's say in the instance of a supervisor, a someone. Uh, I even took it to the point looking at empowerment because mm -hmm. I, I I looked at it and I broke it down and I said, okay, what is an empowerment that sometime that um, is given? And I looked at parenthood. You look parenthood. at what? Parenthood. Parenthood. Okay. Yeah. I looked at parenthood and I, I said, okay, parenthood is often, a, it could be considered a snatched empowerment. Uh, Explain what even, that means. Uh, the way I looked at it, I said, it's because now you have someone to lead or this person empowers you by their dependency on you to take care of them. That's what I, that's what I, I had wrote down. Mm -hmm. We're looking at power, parenthood as empowerment as well. Okay. Um, saying it's a snatched empowerment uh, because sometimes some pregnancies are planned. Mm -hmm. Some are, quote, not planned. Uh, so it's not necessarily one that is, uh, that is, quote, just given. It's not like um, one where you go and you may receive an award for something. And then they say, oh, you're going to lead this group of people, etc." So some empowerment is about, I want to be able to have this position. I want to have this. I want to have someone to depend on me. Mm, mm. Empower, empowerment is about dependency empowerment, empowerment is about dependency i don't know if i would have independency independency and that the person who's the leader but if they're the leader uh -huh. they have people who are dependent on them and they must be able to stand in a right way okay they must be able to stand so in the right a way model. to lead so they're a role model yes they're a role model they're a mentor Mm -hmm. their mentor as well mm -hmm. but the thing is in being a leader you must be able to you must be able to stand strong and confident of yourself mm -hmm. and you must be able to do that without being dependent yourself because the people who you're leading are dependent on you well so, okay so I'm going to take issue with that point that you just raised. You said that as a role model and you're leading, you should stand mm -hmm. strong in your empowerment and you should not be dependent, right? I look at empowerment as a collaboration. Yes, there's a, there's mm -hmm. a certain element of leadership. There's a certain yes. element that, yeah, you are the role model. But Correct. if if you are going to stand in stand in your strength and not 
say, okay, I'm not going to trust you. I'm not going to depend on you for anything. That's kind of disempowering only because if, if you're in a group and you are the leader, you are, mm -hmm. you are the one that's going to take them to the promised land for argument's sake. You still mm -hmm. have to depend on them trusting okay, you, too. you know, yeah. and you trust them. Right. So there has to be that element of trust, that unity that's going to combine the empowerment system. Wouldn't you I agree? agree with that? Yeah, okay. I agree with that. But sometimes if it is a matter, let's say in the beginning, I was talking about a person who is on social media and they are requiring the likes mm -hmm. and the things like that to, to, to make them feel good about themselves, mm -hmm. to make them be able to say, Oh, I'm, you know, this year. Right. Right. You, you know, you shouldn't, you should have that self, that, that confidence within yourself, because as, as the definition is the process of becoming stronger, you must have that strength with or without the likes of, of social media, et cetera, because, but okay. because, I'm sorry. but yes, you are leading people and you want them to trust you and you want to be able to trust them because in leadership and in empowerment, mm -hmm. you are having people who are working with you. And the thing that works well with any empower within within any structured foundation, a good team must be established. Right. The team includes those who are following you and those and the leader. And right. the leader is working back and forth. He's dependent on, let's say, having Let's say the leader has certain skills, but the leader does, he may not, he or she may not be strong in certain areas. Mm -hmm. So what they'll do is they have maybe, you know, one person who's great at doing this, one person is doing that. It doesn't take away from them being a leader, exactly. but they don't, but they don't need, but the thing is, is they don't need, um, they don't need for the people to cheer them on for them to know that they are the leader. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, that, I, I that's, received that. that. Yeah. That, yeah. That's where I'm going with that. Okay. Um, I received that. I received mm -hmm. that. But what about the situation where, and we're talking a regular day-to-day -day dynamic, okay. not necessarily that someone's empowered to be a leader or a manager or a boss or anything like that, just day-to-day -day women interaction. Like the other day, mm -hmm. this woman had on this fabulous outfit when right. i say fabulous i mean it was rocking and okay. i said you know she she passed by me and i was in such awe of it mm -hmm. i had to run behind her and tap her on the shoulder and said oh you look so gorgeous oh i'm glad you did that that's so that's so important to be able to give share. compliments right yeah, to give compliments but it, mm -hmm. but there's a but so yeah. after I did that, okay. I smiled and I proceeded to walk away. She started talking, so I had to stop. Okay. So I said, okay, well, maybe she's going to show some kind of appreciation or something. She started right. to tell me where she got the dress, how much the dress cost, and oh, this little old thing. Oh, I didn't really understand that I was, oh, I didn't believe that I looked so good. I saw my, and she went through this whole dissertation about because why she didn't think that she looked fabulous. And you know what? And that is a great point why I always do what you just did. Because sometimes there are people, let's say maybe she may have a husband, she may have family, but you know what? No one has complimented her in weeks, in months, maybe in years. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. has put herself together and she didn't think that she looked good. And that's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's a problem where she has gotten to a point where she's taken the time out. And, you know, she spent a certain amount on this dress on that. She prepared herself. You know, she may have even had it down to, you know how sometimes you see women who are so pristine. They have the 
the hat, the shoes, the bag, everything is just like, I mean, I, I love, I love that type of a put together because you know and they've mm. taken so much time just to get it all together like right. that right sometimes they've done all that work they may have a husband that's been sitting there for years they may have children that's grown and everything like that and no one has taken the time to say you look beautiful today you know that color pink or that blue or you know the orange or or, or the green that's your color you, you know mm -hmm. <clears throat> or even or even to notice that they change their hair color. Right. So right. that part right. of em 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 empower empowerment <clears throat> doesn't take anything away from you. And it's nothing wrong with sharing mm -hmm. that, th that sharing it in a compliment. It's nothing wrong with sharing love one for another because that's why we were all born mm. to love and to be loved. And sometimes, and in, in, in unfortunately, in society, it hasn't been that way. But the thing is, is we can still walk around in society and, as you say, see someone and just give them that nugget. Mm -hmm. The nugget, or, or what I call those Starbucks moments. The Starbucks moment Starbucks. is finding us. Yeah. I, I, I is Starbucks, Starbucks a sponsor of this show? <laughs> We're plugging Starbucks they are here. They are, we, no, we are not plugging to go to Starbucks. We're saying make 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 your own Starbucks anywhere in the world. You made Starbucks on the street. You, you made you made uh, Marcia Bucks. Yes. <laughs> have that moment with somebody. <clears throat> have that moment with someone in which you don't need to know their name. Right. You don't need to take down their phone number. You're not going to get you know, married. <laughs> you're not getting married. You're not taking them home. You're not doing anything <laughs> but, but just sharing. And sometimes that sharing, sometimes it may even be an intimate thing, but you don't give your name or anything like that, but you need to just get it off your chest. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to just get rid of it. And then... And it's not that you're going to go and meet that person back at the Starbucks or the, the, the diner or wherever it is again. It's just about the fact that they're an ear and your sharing may help them or someone else. Or maybe and, it won't help them, but it's about you. And, it, and that, that comment just brings it full circle to what you had said at the beginning of the show that some people are so involved with the external and oh they didn't like me oh they're gonna like me mm -hmm. but we are all born with that confidence that not everyone knows how to tap into and some some yeah. people that confidence is so trodden upon when they're right. younger you know so then they grow up with these self-esteem issues oh can't see your face they oh, grow yeah. up Sorry. with these self-esteem issues and they don't know how to reconnect with their inner confidence anymore. So now the, the slightest little thing or the slightest person that gives them a compliment, a positive compliment, they then think, oh, they want to marry me. You know, that kind of thing. Yes. Well, the thing is, with um, let's look at, you're saying even being younger and, and, and people not, uh, getting that confidence or beginning to become empowered from the right age. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is children and adults, they need to, they need to get in tap with who they are. How and they, they do that? <clears throat> the thing is, sometimes it takes another person to help you. For instance, I'm going to give a male to female um, uh, mentorship from the Bible. Mordecai mentoring Esther. That was, she, that's a great example of a person who didn't think they would become anything, per se. She was an orphan, and Mordecai took her, took her in. And then 
when it was time, she had to go amongst women and live for about a year preparing herself to meet the king. But it wasn't just her. She was there with other women being prepared, being, you know, learning how to do things. They went to all of these, <clears throat> all of these baths with fragrances, frankincense and myrrh and this and that and the other thing. They were being prepared. The first thing when she went, Mordecai, he was her mentor in that he had to remind her of what her assignment was. And so sometimes we get lost in our assignment when we start comparing ourselves to other people. It usually starts off with the body. Mm -hmm. It starts off, oh, you know what? Boys talk to her more because she has mm -hmm. this big or that big or, or this or that, the other thing. Or sometimes the girl who is um, uh, who's very shy then says, oh, you know what? I want to be a cheerleader because I want to be noticed. You know, if I become a cheerleader, I'll be noticed. I'll have friends. And acting in a certain way, it's really not her. Hmm. And so, yes, it gets her attention. And then, yes, then she says, oh, you know what? Let me get some more attention. Let me start sleeping with a couple of these boys. Mm -hmm. And then they'll like me even more. Mm -hmm. But what happens in that sort of instance is it becomes a trick. The trick happens that then the boys then start talking bad about her and say, oh, she's this, that, the other. Then she becomes shy and says, oh my gosh, I'm not that. So the thing is to look within yourself. And I always do the thing with the fingerprints. There's only one set of fingerprints for every person under the earth and above the earth. No one else will ever have your fingerprints. And even if a person decided to get themselves decked out, head to toe, looked exactly like Kim Kardashian, you know? And <laughs> the body, the face, the hair, the expressions, you know, you, sometimes we see those body doubles and we say, mm. wow, that girl looks just like her. It's amazing. <laughs> she doesn't have her fingerprints. And the thing is, what happens when you talk about the little child? Children often lose who they are. Little girls often, you know, we let little girls go into fantasy. We let little we girls let, go into fantasy? Yes, we do. <clears throat> fantasy meaning in that... Uh, uh, we have them start daydreaming. Oh, one day when you get married, you'll be this. You know, the Barbie and Ken doll and this and that, and they play and, and they get out and they'll say, oh, well, one day I want to be like Barbie. And there really is a person who, who transformed themselves, uh, uh, a woman who transformed herself to look, to look like, like Barbie. Barbie. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, so there are some things that we have to get to reality with. Yes, there are games and you could have children play with dolls and toys and this and that and the other thing but they must understand and tap into the things that are really them if your child likes science you can't say girls are not supposed to be scientists mm -hmm. because we hear that sometimes yeah girls are yeah. not supposed to be scientists if a girl says i want to be a fireman you can't have um you can't say Oh, well, you shouldn't be a fireman. You, you know, she can be a fireman. But there are a lot of things that people, uh, that people do and that people say. And sometimes it, empowerment of women often has to relate sometimes to culture. You know, well, some well, things... Let, and, let, let, let's, back up. let's back up a little bit because I like mm -hmm. the fact that you brought up about the little girl that's mm -hmm. being told, oh, you can't be this or you can't be that. 
then mm -hmm. they grow up into these women who aspire to nothing because they were told from their youth that no, nah, you can't do this and no, you can't do that. And they fall mm -hmm. into what society determines for them as opposed to going by their fingerprint, as you said. Everyone yeah. has that unique fingerprint. I, I am Correct. in total concurrence with that. And everyone has a specific mm -hmm. path. Mm -hmm. But like we discussed before, that the yeah. inner, you know, people have that inner right. confidence, but not everyone right. is equipped to tap into that inner confidence. And <laughs> some of the areas where I see how women are disempowering, we talked about um, being mm -hmm. the child and the child being told, no, you can't do this. But even women, right. Right. when they grow up and they're, they're trying to pursue certain, I don't know, career paths, mm -hmm. and they're, they're, they're mm -hmm. aligned, they're, mm -hmm. they've aligned themselves with, you know, their partners, whether it be male or female, they, they have a partner, mm -hmm. right? A love interest. And they're sharing with that partner, oh, you know, I, I'm going to go take that test to be a fireman. But that's their dream. That's their aspiration. Then the partner mm -hmm. says, oh, you can't do that. Oh, you can't Correct. do that. You know, right. or, they, or they share it with their friend and their friend says, oh, girl, you can't do that. You know you can't do that. You know, and, and they don't support that person's dream. That's a, that's a disempowering situation right there. You know, very disempowering. Mm. And it is. It, it, it really truly is. And the thing is, is that when we get into those situations where people are not supportive of things that are or are or our destiny mm -hmm. our purpose or mm -hmm. uh they don't support quote even um our, our assignment if we're in ministry etc or or just in general our assignment it, it, it's all the same thing purpose destiny assignment um the thing is is once that person has made that sort of negative um, stance and put that in the air, we have to then put up our wall so that we not absorb that negativity. And we have to go in and we have to, because we going back to the definition, it's a process mm -hmm. of getting stronger. Mm -hmm. We have to go in and strengthen ourselves again mm -hmm. so that we keep our mind clear. Because the thing is, our mind has to stay focused. We can't get off key. And that's what happens when we start, when a person comes and plants a seed of negativity, that's to take you off course. Mm -hmm. That's to get you so that you're not focused. You're not empowering yourself. You're not keeping on that. Um, so it's a daily yeah. process. It's a daily discipline. It's a daily it training. Is. Well, not just daily. It's throughout the day. Mm -hmm. I often tell people if there's a scripture and verse that applies to your life at, at the time or the process that you're going through, I tell them, write down that scripture and verse. I say, because there are things that's going to happen throughout the day that's going to take you off course. And I want you to take out that scripture and verse to get you back focused. Mm -hmm. We have to do things because things are going to happen throughout the day. Let's say maybe you come into work, you're feeling all good, you're feeling happy. And then your boss comes and says, um, you know, and I'm firing Sally and, and, and Jane over there. First thing you're thinking is, oh my God, my job. Now your mind is racing. You have been, you know, feeling good about your job. You had even applied for promotion, et cetera, like that. Two other people were getting fired. Now you, often the mind will go like this. You'll start thinking about um, the negative things. You'll start thinking, oh, you know what? Two people have just been fired. Um, I'm next. You know, I may be next. Now, the thing that you should be start thinking. Start to worry. Yeah, and, and, and worrying. The thing that you should be thinking is, okay, you know what, Lord, you know what, I'm still here. You gave me favor. I thank you for, for this day. You, you have to get into the positive of the whole thing. Yes, you could feel bad because those were your girls. Those were, you, you know, and everything like that. You don't know what happened, why they were fired or whatever. And it's not that you should not console them because they're fired. 
but you have to still stay focused on, on, you know, your job and the things that you have to do, you know? Well, um, and, and two, and, and give them words of encouragement mm -hmm. that give okay. them words of encouragement as well, but you're not to get into, I'm going to be fired. You're to take that and say, well, you know what here, Sally or, or Jane, whatever names we, we start off with, with these people who were fired or, or Joe, whoever was fired. And you tell them, say, you, you know what, um, you know, if you need to go, you know, give them you know, encouragement and say, okay, you know, you feel bad or whatever like that. Cause we all feel bad when, when, when a company starts breaking down because it may, gives us, makes us feel weird and makes us feel initially like is my job next. But the thing is you give them that encouragement, but you don't get into the whole thing of feeling like my job is next. The thing is you thank the Lord for that. Your position is still there. And you thank the Lord um, and ask him for favor that you be able to keep your position as well. But well, the thing is, is I don't know. I went into a couple of different things there. You, you, um, you take over, Marcia. Um, I, I, I don't look at, uh, I can say that now because it took me a while to get to this paradigm mm -hmm. shift. But right. I don't see a firing as a bad thing. I always, I, I always advocated that when one door closes, 50 more open up. So because we all have that unique imprint, we don't know what our design is. We don't know what our pathway is. We can only assume Correct. that, okay, I'm supposed to go on this route. Sometimes you're all invested and say, yeah, I'm, I'm supposed to be doing this. This is my calling. And, and you know, the heavens say, or your goddess says, hey, no, mm -mm, wait, wait, enough of that. I have bigger and better things for you. So then mm -hmm. the cause is you get fired. You might say, oh my God, I'm fired. Oh, what's going to happen to me? Well, what's going to happen to you is like more opportunities open up, bigger opportunities open up, you know, for whatever that might transpire mm -hmm. to be. So like I said, it took me a while to get to that place because before I became an entrepreneur, I was fired from a job that I was at for eight years. And eight years right. to me was like a lifetime because I'm just used to being at a job two years, move on, two years, move on. So after eight right. years and they fired me, I was devastated. But look at me now, 14 years later, and I'm like, woohoo, never <laughs> turn back, you know? So that's that was, that's just my my rebuttal to the firing aspect but i wanted well, well, to i want i wanted to i wanted to you you made mention that you know we have to protect our minds and we mm -hmm. have to protect it on a daily daily second by second basis Correct. i used to hang around <coughs> excuse me i used to hang around this lady and i did not realize how much of a mean girl she was until i kind of left the friendship mm -hmm. we used to hang out everywhere but she was so filled with negativity and because i always laugh everything off i didn't really realize the the real meaning so for example Correct. Right. we would see another friend mm -hmm. and she would say hey how you doing and the right. person would start you know responding Mm -hmm. And we'd walk away, and it, it's not until after we left the company of that person she would share with me that I don't know why I asked her how she was doing because I really didn't give a shit. Basically, you know, I didn't care mm. what she had to say. So I I started looking at things like that and said, well, you know, that's so disingenuous. Why even right. bother to say, well, how are you if you don't care how the if person you don't is? Care. You know. Right. And there's another instance where we would be in a conversation. And mm -hmm. she would never allow me to finish what I'm saying. And I found that that was kind of like a bullying tactic. Mm. But I said, why is it that I can never voice my opinion as if I don't have a voice and you don't want to hear what I have to say? So why even have a conversation with me? So it wasn't until after I left that scenario and in reflection, I said, you know, these things are really negative and dysfunctional. So 
Those are just disempowering techniques. I'm not even sure if she was aware how disempowering she was being or how mean she was being. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? So maybe there are other women who fit that paradigm that don't even realize the injustice that they're spewing. And this is on a day-to-day -day basis, regular nine to well, nine kind of scenario. Oh, you, you know what? I often see this being said, I'm petty. Mm -hmm. I'm petty like that. Mm. And and I had looked up the word petty because I was going to do a radio program on it. And I had started some notes on it and stuff and looking at it. And I put it to the side because I had recalled the situation. And it was uh, it was on someone's Periscope. The, the lady, she's a known person on Periscope. And... Um, so she was at the gym and she was exercising. She was doing all this stuff. And so she had been complaining. You know, so, so I would watch her scope for like a couple of days. I had been watching consistently. And so, I, so she had been complaining about her knees. And so I had went on and I said, hey, I said, you know, why don't you try swimming? Mm -hmm. And, you know, for your knees. And, and so she just instantly just started coming at me. Um, she said, like, she said, uh, she said, why don't you swim you, yourself? You could swim for both of us, and this, and she just just, just went on and on. <laughs> no, on she and didn't. I'm, I'm just, yeah, and I'm, I'm just like, and so I felt bad, uh -huh. and so but I ended it, and I said, I said, well, um, uh, I said, you know, I said, well, uh, I hope you tried or whatever. I forgot what I said, but I ended it nicely, but. It really did bother me because it wasn't anything bad because I wasn't doing anything bad. Mm. And sometimes when people have been hurt, uh, they come out like wild bulls at other women, at other men, because they said, you're not going to get at me. I'm not going to let nobody get me again. Mm -hmm. So they come out in this way that's a little rough and it's not needed. When people are being loving and kind to you. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what happens. Sometimes it, when people, when they've been hurt. Hurt at people some hurt point, people. You know what? I didn't like that line before. Really? Why? I, don't, I, I didn't because you know what? It was said to me during a deliverance time. I was having, and, and I wasn't, I said, how could, you know, if you're, if you're looking and you're seeking for self-improvement mm -hmm. and, and you're really, really at it and, and you don't mind, you know, I mean, and you're trying to be humble as ever, mm -hmm. hearing that line is really, it's not necessarily true for everybody. It's so not you don't think that hurt and people hurt people? Put out there. You don't think hurt people hurt Not people? Not all the time. No. Mm -mm. Huh. I don't think it. I don't think it goes for everybody. That's not a key. This for everybody because there are some hurt people that that have gotten so compassionate and loving and and they're just like you know what I don't want I would never want to treat anybody the way I was treated. Mm. So they may be so self conscious of the way they treat people. Mm that they don't want to hurt people. But then too, sometimes in treating and doing that, then they become like a doormat mm -hmm. and they have to mind that. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what women have to do too. Mm -hmm. But sometimes women, they are jealous of things. They're not taught about, you know what? Uh, when your sister goes across the street, you know, you're to um, hold her, hold her hand, you know, as well you know it's not about you getting oh here's a good example i just saw quickly you know on the um cheerleaders how one is standing on the other shoulders uh -huh. and there's always somebody at the bottom uh -huh. you don't have to stand on your sister's shoulders and leave her at the bottom you don't have to do that you could hold your sister's hand and both of you 
guys go up the stairs and go up to a higher level together. You don't okay. have to stand on her. And sometimes we're taught in the wrong way how to deal with other women. We're mm -hmm. taught and we're put in defensive, like I said, like in social media. It, you know, here, uh, like, I hate those things. Put your selfie up and everybody say who you like. <laughs> who looks better? Why would you want to do that? It's really silly. You, you, you know, I mean, and then, and then that takes that person, if nobody gets any likes at all on mm -hmm. their picture, what do they think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You it, know, like, it, I, don't know, I, 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 I don't mean to, I don't mean to cut you off, but we're, we're almost mm -hmm. toward the end. And I just wanted oh, to, wow. to bring forth, I know our conversation is really juicy. I just wanted to bring forth, how do we create a better environment? How do we not fall into that trap of how society has pitted us against each other? I mean, I can go real deep into the colonialism and, you know, the mm -hmm. slave and the survival mentality and all this kind of stuff, but we're not going to do that right now. <laughs> we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. But because we've been raised, and I know I speak for a lot of West Indian raised women, <clears throat> we've been raised to not trust each other. We've been raised to compete against each other. We've been raised that there is, we can't, <clears throat> we can't get along. We have to compete against. Mm -hmm. We're here to dispel that on the Speaker MC show. So going forward, how do we make other women tap into their inner and not pay so much attention to the outer, knowing that with the inner, we gain that strength of confidence. Knowing that with the inner, once we are confident, we can also pull another sister up by their bootstraps, you know, come walk with me, don't let me stand on your shoulder. How can we explain that, yes, hurt people don't necessarily hurt people, but hurt people may become someone else's doormat. So they have to tap into the inner. How do we go forward to create that scenario where we empower them now? We, we've, been, we've been talking about this disempowerment and we've been talking about how women have been ill-treated and you know, mm -hmm. how do we now go to share with our audience what they can do to not let that happen or if they realize these situations, what they can do mm -hmm. to create the harmony? Well, the first thing uh, that they could do and the person could do is remove all negativity from themselves that have been said about them. And they have to get focused. They have to get focused. To be focused, you get focused through even, I mean, for me, myself, that I teach is prayer. Uh, the example we were given from the Bible was Mordecai and Esther. Uh, Mordecai himself, he saw what was in her and he kept on reminding her who she was. He reminded her of her assignment that she was there eventually to, to she was there for her people. Uh -huh. She was picked and she was, you know, the orphan girl became the queen. So it doesn't make a difference what path of life you're in. It doesn't make a difference, let's say right now. I mean, there are people who have gone uh, from, like even, oh, what is her name? Oh my, I was trying to think of um, uh, uh, one of the famous authors. I see her face right now. I'll remember the name in a few. <laughs> but there are people, I mean, there are people, yes, there are people who have been um, uh, dancers. They've been prostitutes. They've been this... They've Maya? gone through many things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we That's go. That's my girl. <laughs> yes, and, and 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 she, and look who she became. You, you know, yeah. I mean Esther in the in the Bible, and also there were other women in the Bible too. But the thing is, is despite where they came, their niche, despite the path in the that they originally were walking on. You know, it may have been a rubble road starting, but just like the, the young lady who got on the gold road, the yellow brick road, you eventually will get there, but she had to remain focused. Uh -huh. 
She had to keep on reminding herself. And sometimes it takes somebody to remind you who you are. Someone who doesn't mind saying, you know what? You can do this. They're not jealous of you. The thing is, there's no jealousy because of the fact. You know why jealousy is, is the stupidest thing ever? Jealousy why? is the stupidest thing ever because of the fact of your fingerprints. No one will ever be you. You are so unique. You are wonderful. You are awesomely made by God. Even if you don't believe in God, you don't have to believe in God. God believed in you so much. He only made one of you. Now you may say there are thousand singers out there. Yes. Oh, I've got the best example. Here's the business example for the business people. Five Chinese restaurants right across the street from each other. In Brooklyn, you know, Bronx, Queens, you know, and all that, you know, I grew up in and in Queens and in Jamaica and everything like that. And the thing is, is there are tons of Chinese restaurants right across the street from each other. And they all have the same menu, basically. Maybe yes. one has some shez, maybe one has some shezwan. Okay, one is the hot, <laughs> one is the hot one. But the basic menu is the same. The same. You're right. You're right. The thing that you have to remember is they did not say, you know what, that's, they may say that's my competition or whatever, but the thing is, everybody stays in business. They're probably all cousins. Everybody stayed in business despite them having the same menu. Everybody had a customer. So you have to think about it like this. I'm a singer. I am, you know, I may cook curry, you know, but nobody's going to make curry like you. Nobody's right. going to, nobody's going to do this like you. No one ever will. That's, you that's know? such a valid point. And the pie is big enough for all of us to take apart it, and it eat surely is. and be filled. You know, mm -hmm. the pie without, is big. without being jealous. Exactly. And without, and without trying, oh, without trying to stab your, you, you saw the, the, uh, the food vendors, I think on 46th street or whatever like that. The competition, the, the street vendors, the competition, one man, it was one day last week, the, they got mad with each other and then he stabbed him with a kitchen knife out there oh in God, Manhattan. No, no. We don't have to do that. No. You know, people do crazy things. No, you know, they think, you know, let me get rid of the competition. Once, once you kill them, somebody else is going to take it. Exactly. Take your plate. Exactly. It's like in the Matrix, you know, when, when Neo is fighting these guys, uh, the, the virus, and as soon right. as he knocks them out, another one pops up just like him. So, right. yeah, I agree. So we have and, come and so, to the yeah. We have to the come end, right. to the to the portion, yeah, where I really want to be uh, full integrity to give you your five minutes, so you can tell the audience a little bit more oh. about Pastor Juanita. I'll even shut off my camera, so it'll be oh. all about you. Tell us who you are, where we can locate you. What do you, what okay. is your gift to us? So you're okay. on. <laughs> well, I thank you for being here with us today. Um, I hope that you just, the basic thing, whether, I mean, we did women empowerment, but even if you're a man, I hope the basic thing that you got out of this today is that you're unique, that uh, there's no one in the, on the earth above or underneath the earth it will ever be you and that you have to just tap into the things that you like the things you're passionate about or the things that you should try doing even if you knit socks you know i mean i want you to start your knit socking business there's a woman who makes aprons i came across on 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 facebook you would never think aprons would be the thing but i want an apron now because I never thought how beautiful aprons could be and she's so creative with it. I want you to just know, even if you don't believe in God, because I, I have people who don't believe in God, I want you to know, oh, I lost my thing. Oh, I lost my battery. Oh dear, it seems that we have lost Juanita. Her battery is gone. Oh dear. <laughs> well, Juanita, we love you, darling. We love you. <laughs> 
Do we have anyone from the audience who wants to pose a question? We're here to answer any questions you may have for the Speaker MC show. Anyone? Are you all on mute? Uh, let's see. Does anyone want to pose a question? Yes, no, hello. Hi. About women empowerment, hi. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Oh, fabulous. Who is this? Life of a mom. Yeah, Katisha. Katisha. It How shows up you? as life of a mom. I'm going to have to change it out. <laughs> Thank you for being on the show. Do you have any questions? My guest just lost her, her um, internet or her phone died or something. No, I just want to say a great, great topic. Um, oh, something you. that's good for us to bust up and unpack and look at so that we can show up more powerfully on this planet mm -hmm. and play a bigger role and play a bigger uh, play a bigger game and really start healing some of these things that need to be healed that are happening out here in this good world. So... Absolutely. Thank you for bringing the conversation to um, the forefront so we can talk about it and unpack it. Yes, so can, yes. So we can walk lightly. Yes, <laughs> yes. And not on eggshells either. Thank you yes. so much, Khadija. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank Anyone you. Anyone else wants to put a comment, suggestion, question, anything? Anybody? Anybody. Anybody going once, going twice? Okay, well, if no one else has any questions, comments, or suggestions, I just want to say thank you all for being on the Speaker MC show tonight. And I do apologize for my guest. Her battery ran out, but, you know, these things happen. The show must go on. And my other guest, she had a family emergency, so she could not show up here tonight. So... Godspeed with you, Janine, and I hope all is well. So we've come to the end of our show, Woman to Woman. I hope that it was informative. I hope that you learned a thing or two, even just how we disempower each other without any kind of intention thus forth. Uh, my name is Marcia Chambers, a.k.a. Speaker MC. This show will air again for September. Oh, Dear, well, September 4th is a holiday, so we're airing on September 11th. That show will be Man to Man. And on September 13th, stay tuned for the Swell Happy Hour. The Swell Happy Hour will be talking about masturbation. Solo play, solo play, yes, because not many people are like, I don't want you to clutch your pearls on the Speaker MC show, but that's what we talk about. And we are having our launch party September 21st. Ah, so excited about that. I'll be sending out the flyers and the links where you could sign up. And it's an event. It's a paid event. And food and bellinis all night for the next three hours. And vendors are invited. And we'll be talking about love, sex, and relationships. And how you can be a part of S-W-E-L-L. -L. So stay tuned for the link. And I thank you for joining us here tonight. And as Maya Angelou always says, people will never remember what you said. People will never remember what you did. But they will always remember how, they, how you made them feel. And I hope we've made you feel really good tonight. So until next time, see you. Bye from the Speaker MC Show. Ha, ha, ha.